conflict between employees is a lot like parenting when it comes to being the leader or the manager of those employees. And it brings up the age-old question that I know a lot of my, my friends that are parents bring up, which is, do you let them duke it out, handle it on their own, or do you become the referee, or do you do something else? Well, in this video, I'm going to explore those three options, give you my perspective. Now, I'm Karen Valencic, and I have worked for about three decades uh, with leaders and teams with a specific specialty in conflict mastery. Because when I talk about conflict between employees, I'm talking about dysfunctional conflict. So the number one thing is to let them duke it out or handle it on their own. Well, something I want to point out to you as a leader or manager is if they have problems already and you are aware of it, then they do not have the skill level to duke it out or to solve it on their own. And keep in mind what I have observed in these three decades is that the majority of people come to the workplace, their conflict skills, their communication skills are learned in their families and they're also learned through our entertainment and media. Most of that is not very productive or innovative. Literally, when I say that if you've got conflict between employees, it's like parenting, it actually is because I think we all bring our family roles to our workplace unless we've spent some time developing that skill, that muscle of conflict mastery. I don't recommend that, and I don't recommend it for children either. The other thing about letting them duke it out is we all come wired in some personality way. And what happens when you let kids or employees duke it out, the person that has the most dominance will likely win that. And what you end up with is a lot of dysfunction on your team. And if you're a parent, you're going to raise kids that don't know how to get out of their pattern of acquiescing or beating people up to get their way. So it's really not a great idea to promote letting them duke it out on their own. The second thing is you can become the referee. I don't recommend that either. You know, the typical manager will spend 25 to 40 percent of his or her hours every week dealing with workplace conflict. You don't want to be the referee with your employees and not only is it not productive use of your time, it also, if you're out there trying to solve all of that for them, then it creates a lot of dysfunction on the team. So don't do that. <laughs> the third option, and what I advocate, of course, is get some training, get some skill development in conflict mastery. That is the best investment any person in any level can do for themselves. Because if you can master conflict, it gives you a sense of freedom and respect and some skills and be able to deal with differences in a way that's productive. If you're a leader and you haven't developed that skill yourself, you won't be such a great referee either. So develop your people. And actually, I'm going to do a little plug for myself because I have actually an online course now. It's, I mean, if you go to www.conflictmasterycourse.com, you can find information about it. And it, it provides training and video coaching as well. So check that out. The other thing along with getting that skill is to actually create some agreement around your employees. Because you know what? Your whole team is affected when you have just even two people that have conflict. I suggest, and what I typically do with teams, is I take them through a process that's a dialogue process. It's really powerful and actually the process itself is so powerful. But what we do is we create a team credo. And that is a credo and an agreement about how they want to hold each other accountable in the way they work together. It's very powerful. I have them formulate it in yes or no questions because a question is much more engaged than just a value on the wall. For example, you can say, we value trust. But if you say instead, am I trustworthy? Or can I trust you? Or can you trust me? Those are different and they beg a conversation. 
And I've done that with I've done that with hundreds of teams, maybe even more than that. But it's very, very powerful. So that's my take. Don't let them duke it out. Don't be the referee, but really spend some time and invest in your skill building and your team development. That is all I have today. I can go into all of that in great depth, but I subscribe to me. This is the subjects that I talk about here. Thank you so much for hanging in here with me, and I look forward to seeing you the next time.